And welcome back, everybody. Thank you again for sticking with us. Tuki here, of course, joined, as always, by my broadcast partner, Sin. One series in the books, and we are ready to move on to our second matchup of the day, the regular season battle between IQ and Urubur Hockey. Sin, very much excited for this one. As we said on the other side of the break, a good opportunity for both of these teams this season to find themselves uh, back in the hunt. Both were playoff teams last year. IQ finishing eighth. Of course, they lost to the team that we just saw in action in Frolunda and Orbro, previously known as Poggers. They uh, finished seventh. So again, this is going off of last year's uh, results, a very close and interesting matchup that we have here tonight. Definitely. And again, these are, we, we mentioned it kind of in the, in the pregame of the last one, this, this matchup right here, definite, you know, possible playoff implications or just, you know, the battle to get into the playoffs, you know, in those, you know, very coveted seven, eight, you know, nine, all those spots right there, like right on the edge. We talked about it, you know, the kind of tiers here in the elite, you know, you have the uh, relegation positions and then you have those bubble positions, lower, lower half playoff bracket, upper half. And, you know, both of these two teams, definite possibilities to be in that lower bracket but perhaps make even you know make some strides get themselves into the middle more secure playoff position and if that does happen we could be seeing a first round matchup out of the pair of these two which would be uh very very interesting absolutely let's get you a look at some of the latest results going on around the league to continue to set the stage here for this particular matchup of course we had seen for linda and hv going head to head sin we saw it pointed out in chat Feriostat. Taking four points off of Havu. Been a very interesting start for Havu this season. How do you feel about that one? And what other results stand out for you? I'm pretty shocked as as we, we you know we really saw Havu making a lot of strides to move away from the pure system play and that's a scoreline that I would have expected to perhaps see uh, in, in some of the pre previous seasons, you know, kind of low scoring and they somehow don't come out on the right side of that. And Feriastad, I mean, th those are huge, huge wins for them. And I mean, one point for Havu is OK, but that's they, they you know, you got to feel like they definitely expect better of themselves. What a start to the season for Feriastad. I look at the updated standings here as well. Of course, worth noting there too, Granite. Uh, taking two games off of Azure Gordon as well. So there you see, as it stands right now, through four games, well, surprise, surprise, who are the two perfect teams? Well, they were our finalists last year for Lunda and Hreds. Orobro does technically have a chance, though, uh, to match that output if they can pull off the double here. So, I mean, Sin, obviously, again, 30-game regular season. We're still super early on here, but some interesting results for the first couple of match days. Yep, absolutely. And if Erebro here can sort of, you know, take three out of four points or maybe even get the double over IQ, which is going to be tough as we get in both of these teams so, so evenly matched up. But Erebro with a very good start, seven goals for, two goals against. So they can keep something similar like that up against uh, IQ here. I think they could easily guarantee themselves the split in, this, in, a, in a situation like this. A reminder as we get ready to look at the team lineups here as well, the prediction up in chat for how you think this game might go. Let's take a look. At the squads in this particular matchup for IQ Niepi, Ikevalko, uh, which is one of the names that has just been a tongue twister for me, and I don't know why. And new addition, Yergli on the right, Nico and Potsburg on defense, Teme between the pipes, and for Urbro, it is Yakuri. Nepa is there as well, Jansku on the right, Captain Terity with Migo Buna on defense. And Ellie Kamel between the pipes. And Sin, in talking about these particular matchups, I mean, looking at the centers as well, uh, there's some good potential scoring threats down the middle for both of these teams, especially with the Cavalco coming back uh, to the elite division. Yeah, absolutely. And he was. Um, a steamroller in light division in the last season, 96 points in 30 games played. Hasn't played in the ECL Elite since season 10, where he only actually played four games, but was with that almost famous squad in ECL 9, where he did pick up 40 points in 30 games played. So you got to think the talent's there. Um, it's hopefully for him just kind of like uh, riding a bike, getting back into this one. We'll see how uh, he's able to do in this matchup here, which as we mentioned, could be, you know, a battle uh, with this team in the standings towards the end of the season for both teams as well left wings both over point per game paces in the elite division last season right wings same story you had Jansku 58 points in 30 games 
last year. And again, his matchup on the right-hand side, Jurgli, who comes over from Goons, had 53 points in a full 30-game season. So there is some you know, potential for a high power, a high fire power offenses for both of these clubs. And defensively as well, both teams, lefty, were here before. Terry, as I mentioned, the captain for Urbro, and then Nico as well. But we talk about IQ. They bring over Pottsburg from Kova Esports, and Migo Buna comes over from Rusty Blades. So you have teams that are very familiar with one another. A couple of changes as well. I'm, I'm intrigued to see how this goes. I really do think both teams could be back in the playoffs this year. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you know, I'm really, really kind of curious to see uh, really how, how, how these kind of new additions are going to sort of solidify the roster. Obviously, they picked them up for a reason. They think they can, you know, fill uh, some sort of a need that the team has. And uh, Migo Boone is going to be uh, very interesting uh, for me as well to watch on that right D spot. Want to point out Teme as well between the pipes for IQ. Sydney sat out ECL 12. Last played with Yippie Vaskula in 11, but I want to talk about his FCL. Of course, the uh, Finnish championship, he did play with IQ. Regular season, 16-0-0 in FCL with an 83.33 save percentage. So an 8-3-3 there uh, all across the board. I mean, again, uh, another goaltender that we're looking at to say, you know, interesting potential here. But oftentimes, you never quite know what the <laughs> what the average save percentage is going to be for goaltenders as well. It seems to flip from season to season how often you have the offense dominating and maybe the defense resulting in lower scoring games. Yeah, absolutely. But he's definitely going to need to be uh, at his, at his best here um, in this uh, in this series. But yeah, throughout this season as well, not going to be able to take a break. The team is going to be looking for him to put up solid performances here and give themselves the best chance at uh, at securing one of those playoff positions. Absolutely. So again, we are just a few moments away from puck drop a game one of two between these two clubs. Again, for anybody new, I always like to mention, of course, every team in our 16 teams in the elite division plays each other, of course, once a home at home in the regular season. And it always gives us those interesting looks at what playoff matchups we could be in store for and of course our new format as well ECL 22 split into two different seasons of course we have our winter season that we're starting here and of course the spring season as well later on we'll be crowning a grand champion this year as well with that format uh sin very excited of course to see how that plays out and there you get another look at the prize pool that is at stake a lot of money up for grabs this year sin <laughs> And I promise this time not to overhype it and make the stream crash again. So I'm just going to go ahead and say, yeah, the, the huge implications here. And I, I do really like the format of the, uh, you know, the grand final being that again, it just kind of raises the stakes that much higher, as you mentioned here. And, uh, Kind of, kind of draws it out a lot more, you know. Not every, I mean, every season will have this championship, but to be at the top of the mountain, it takes work throughout multiple seasons, and that's kind of really what you like to see, you know. All throughout the year, you work for that big prize, that number one spot, and it's going to be interesting to see it play out. Absolutely, of course, we want to mention here as well. Exclamation point! Survey in chat gets you an opportunity. At winning a PlayStation 5, all you have to do is share your thoughts with us. We are looking for your feedback, some suggestions on things that we could change, things that we can improve. Let us know your thoughts on the current status of one NHL gamer. Again, exclamation point survey in chat. You'll have your chance to win a PlayStation 5. And of course, it is also worth noting the schedule as well uh, that we have. Of course, Sin and I will be here every Monday. Wednesday, and now Thursday. Again, same time, 1945 CET. Of course, that is 2 p.m., roughly 2 p.m. Eastern uh, for those of you on the North American side of things. And, of course, every Tuesday as well. It's busy, busy times here on this channel. Our pro division gets coverage as well. Uh, so, I believe we have a look at our matchup for tomorrow, if I am not mistaken, as we will see... Uh, two of the teams that we're going to witness today. We already saw for London action. We're about to see Urobro, and they will be going head-to-head -to -head tomorrow. We will also get a chance to see Feriastad fresh off of their upset of Habu in their series, and they'll take on Northern Ascendancy, another team looking to get back into the playoff hunt. Yeah, definitely going to be some interesting uh, matchups. Uh, some of the 
Um, well, more, more, more fun to te teams to cover, that's for sure. For Lunda, you know, always, uh, always a pleasure to watch. You know, Northern Ascendancy kind of always been those upstarts, and Fedestad, of course, with uh, hopefully Mick save it over his uh, internet injury by that point, as we, <laughs> as we like, as we've called it. We um, will hammer that yeah. term into the ground <laughs> by week three. We're normalizing it, man. I mean, we, we, yeah, we're trying to trying to make things more official here. Yeah, you don't have injury troubles. You just gotta or. Uh, in internet in internet see i can't even talk now 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 we've messed it up we've we've made it too normalized and i'm stumbling over my words now but uh there yeah it's uh it's gonna be a great matchup tomorrow it's always fun to see fetish sad with that you know the crazy potential that they have on those uh slap passes to afe and uh yeah so with that again puck drop just about ready the two teams on the ice and here we go iq in their road whites and it is of course urubro hockey in the red so again, we want to shout out our sponsors, of course, in Xville, Wilhelm, Kovalon, Lakritzi, and ST Hockey. As we are ready to go here, an early offside call. You heard us mention it quite a few times, of course, in that breakdown. A lot of high uh, scoring forwards in this matchup, to say the least. Jansku has his shot blocked by Ikevalko. So he'll bring it into the attacking zone. Holds up, has a couple of options. Goes over to Nico. Now down low. Held in the corner by Niepi. Looking at his options. Shot blocked down. Nico tried to throw that one on. Opportunity now for Yakuri to get it out. Maybe down to Migo Buna. Again, here is Niepi not able to find any space. Jansku in the attacking zone. Sauced one on goal. Ends up on the far side boards. And out of the zone, down for icing. We're under five minutes into this opening period. Yep, definitely uh, more of a feeling out process than we've seen in, in the previous matchup today as uh, both these teams just trying to not overcommit to anything but still uh, try to get something settled. As we saw Niepi kind of uh, working in the corner right there, waiting for something to open up. And uh, Erbro just not really willing to move off their positions. Niepi here. The center tried to go back. A trip is called IQ. Going to the power play here in the early stages as Nepa will take a seat for a honestly pretty well-timed trip for where the puck was in a very dangerous area. Yeah, definitely was. And uh, again, always tough to see your center being the one sitting in the box right here. Nonetheless, it's going to be a good opportunity for IQ to get that early lead against Edinburgh. Off the draw, chance here held on the forehand. Circling back towards the point. D to D. Again, Pottsburg down for Yergley. Set to Pottsburg. Good patience here on display for IQ. DDD one-timers blocked. Yep, he wins it. Here's Yergley down low. Looking at his options in front. Big save. Ali Kamel able to stop. And Kavalko on the doorstep. Great stop there. From the Orbro netminder. That was absolutely massive. It was a good job from Yergeli to sort of uh, force that putt into the middle, waiting for Ikavalko to get that body position, which he did. And just huge saves coming out. That shot just to flex wide. Yergeli still battling for it down low. We'll go back to the point. Pottsburg. Now Yergeli again wanted to find that centerman in front. Terity can't get this one out. 30 seconds remaining on the power play. D to D work broken up. Jansku is all alone on the breakaway. And he can't get a clean shot off. At least not as he would have wanted. It is off the blocker of Teme. Interesting way to end that penalty kill for Urbro. They nearly were able to take that goal. Yeah, I'm kind of wondering if he meant to wind up that slap shot right there. Maybe try to do uh, some kind of a toe drag thing to get a toe drag shot. Nonetheless, uh, as he's mentioned, not able to get the clean shot away. What an attempt right there from Napa. That was very, very close as he cut across the net mouth. This one back into the neutral zone, nearly halfway through the first. Great chances for both teams. As it's Migo Buna dumping it into the far side. Just missed time, though. It'll be a free possession for IQ with the most difficult to read jersey numbers in the entirety of the elite division. That pass broken up, held in at the point by Potsburg. Jurgli in the corner, battling along with Terity. Still the captain, not able to hold on to it for Urbra. Again, circling back, Niepi in the corner, not really being pressured, taking advantage of the space. Run off the puck, Ikevalko's there, couldn't find Jurgli. Great heavy collapse from Urubro so far. A chance now here for Yakuri. He holds Migo Buna, shot blocked. 
So IQ getting the better of the possession play. That one off escape. skate, Migo Buna. Holds it for Uber, Ikevalka. Not able to find anybody on the pass. Yakuri for Jansku. Drives his way into the open space. Spin pass off the mark and intercepted. Again down the other way. Iepi looking for his options. Terity's there to defend. He'll dump it out. Interesting moment here. Jansku will be able to give chase. Gets the icing called off. Wraparound bid doesn't go. Great heads up play by the winger for Urbro. And that could have just as easily been a great play for IQ if Nico had been able to kind of grab that puck, hold it into the zone right there. They could have really been able to get something with those uh, skaters from Erbro kind of going up high, uh, trying to get the rush back the other way. They did get it, fortunately for them, but yeah, just a, kind of an unfortunate break and bounce there for Nico, who couldn't hold that line. They shot on from an odd angle there. We saw one of those go in in the previous matchup. Pass over now for Terity. Tried to find the winger. Terry still gives chase. Final minute and a half here. Nice sauce pass to Yergley. He'll drop back. Pottsburg at least gains the line. Cavalco shot. Great block. Terry will send it around. Urubro looking for one more rush. Base here for Napa trying to find his way through. Can't get that pass through double team coverage, but wins it back. Looking. Puck still in front. Backhand off the side of the goal. Three seconds here. And we will see Nico wind down the clock. So a very uh, highly contested first period. Still looking, though, for our opening goal of this game. Yeah, no real team getting clear advantage right there, but both teams willing to uh, re really throw it down defensively. We saw some great shot blocking coming off from both of these uh, sides, uh, namely at the end there. It was Edebro in their own zone uh, blocking that uh, the shot from the middle. It's, it's very common uh, in this iteration of NHL to watch those uh, defensemen sort of walk the line there and put those shots in from kind of the high point. And you see it right there. There is, I wish we had a shot attempt number because I think both of them would be hovering around five, uh, mm -hmm. either from hitting the side of the net or the post or shots being blocked. So definitely wasn't, you know, uh, uh, an unwillingness to pull the trigger from either team. I would just say great collapses, especially from Edebro, as we saw IQ working the walls, trying to pull him out of position, and Edebro just saying no. They wanted to play in that middle there, take away all those high percentage scoring areas, which forced IQ to take those perimeter shots and where Edebro was able to block the shot. So very good kind of um, systemic, uh, systematic play from both of these two sides. We'll see which one is going to want to maybe kind of open things up in the second period to generate that little bit of extra offense. Second period underway here. Looking for that opening goal. IQ, one and one on the season. Robo started off their season winning both of their games. We said in the pregame, they have a chance to become just the third team. Start off the season 4-0, but IQ certainly have something to say about that. Here goes Nico down that left-hand side. Absolutely trucked, but a huge interception. From Niepi on that left-hand side, taking away a great odd man rush opportunity for Urbrick. As Ikevalko will send that one back to the defense. Good movement. Valko again down low, gets it back in front, knocked loose. At the last moment, both of those teams really battling for the prime real estate. Here's Jansku. Nepa trying to find his way through. Potsburg there losing it. That shot doesn't find its way through for your curry. Really, so it's a chess match, a chess match at this point for who's going to make that first mistake. Good kick save off the wrister attempt. Ellie Kamel was there, and this one will go down for Ryson. I like the idea though, the slap, uh, the slap pass right there, more of a almost a direct pass than trying to bank it off of the the end boards there, as uh, trying to hit uh, Yakuri there and maybe kind of go off the boards into him or just a direct pass to him, which actually can work. Just unable to connect right there but again I think it's going to be the team that wants to open it up take a couple risks here and there who may strike first and fortune for Edebro just unable to connect Nico's pass a little bit off the mark IQ maintain possession chance here for Ikevalko try to again go back in the middle no space there off that collapse shot doesn't find its way through the traffic that a little bit of trouble shot from the point broken down but again another chance wired just wide a lot of power on that shot. That one hits the side of the goal. And back to Pottsburg at the point. He loses it. It's another clean breakaway for Jansku. He scores on the backhand. No mistake this time. And Urbro make them pay. Fool him once. They're not going to fool him twice. He makes the most of that chance. 
and uh, Janske just tremendous reads right there. I mean, that both of those uh, kind of breakaways that he got were from him reading what IQ was trying to do, jumping on it, forcing the turnover, getting a break for himself. That's such a tough situation to be in as a defenseman when you're trying to get a pass, maybe even getting caught in a bit of an animation or just flat out caught flat footed. And uh, Jansku makes some pay right there, taking the lead for Erbro, one nothing. Offside here for IQ midway through the second period. And you mentioned it, he's been great on those reads. Play with fire too many times, you are going to get burned. Yeah, and that's going to kind of make IQ maybe second guess working those points, which really works to Edinburgh's favor. If you kind of take that away, you can really shut down the down low. And we've already seen how effective their collapse has been so far. So see what adjustments IQ want to make to sort of penetrate that. Chance there on the near post. Ellie Kamel forced to cover. That was really close, and that one nearly swept in by Ikevalko at the last possible moment. Yeah, sometimes just uh, pucks and bodies. Jeanette can do wonders at least. Uh, maybe if you don't score, you at least kind of jack up the goaltender's heart rate a bit. Off the draw, Erebro back in possession. Stretch pass, what a play, and tried to go to the far side. Almost looked like a, a near Forsberg attempt from it, distance. It absolutely was. He tried to do that, uh, the one-handed tuck uh, on the forehand right there, and... That's, you know, something that you can do. If you can't cut across that location, you got to try to get creative. And Jansku looking exceptionally dangerous here for Edinburgh early on. IQ's pass off the mark. Good job by Jansku to help out. But again, IQ in on the four check. After having a little bit of trouble. They try the quick out. A little bit off the mark. Nico's there for IQ. Tries to bring it back in again. About the third time we've seen Nico or Nico rush the uh, rush the blue line, just get absolutely flat. -lined. That pass off the mark. Rubro that will maintain possession. Napa looking around. Nico Buna somehow kept that one in, but only momentarily. Here's Yergeli for IQ. Great poke check by Terity, but kept in by Ikavalko. Loose puck bouncing around. They just couldn't pull the trigger on a shot. Big stretch pass, Nepa able to tie that one. Whoa, and it's in! Swept in by the defender, last touched by Onsku. He has his second of the game. And Sid, unfortunately, we won't get a look at it, but a real tough break there. 2 nothing now for Urbra. Yeah, it almost looked like Nico got possession on it, and that's is what, what put it in right there. Hard to say without the uh, follow-up replay, of course, but that started from really good uh, defense there from Erbro, um, namely Terity, to break up. That two on one is really what kind of kept that uh, that sequence alive. So we have the final 30 seconds of the period here. One more rush chance, perhaps. Nepa down the middle. Nikovalko has it. Will they go for it? Yergley's pass off the mark. Two to nothing. For the boys in red. The end of the second period. As we will hopefully. Indeed, this will be a look at the first goal there, the breakaway on the back end from Jansko. Yeah, and that was, again, just coming from a terrific read from him. And as he, on, the, on his initial breakaway earlier on, he had a little bit of uh, trouble with the puck there. Not so much on that one, just nearly straight lined it. A couple uh, easy moves to put it by Teme for IQ. And, I mean, that second one just a really kind of unfortunate break i'm wondering if we'll, we are going to get a look at it but if you look at the time on attack there it's five plus minutes for iq yet only two registered shots so again edibro willing to sacrifice the perimeters uh to get uh, to, to protect the middle and so far it's working wonders for them the counter attack is there yeah that's what it is right there nico Ooh. yeah it, that's a tough situation he lets go of the skill stick to try to get the intercept which was the correct uh play i think because that pass was on the mark it could have been a clean shot however he doesn't get the clean pickup and it just kind of skitters through his own goaltender there that's kind of uh between a rock and a hard place there for nico who's uh, uh kind of having a rough go so far not really to his own fault but he's gotten decked at the blue line a couple times and now with the uh, kind of half of an own goal right there i guess we'll call it and See what IQ wants to do here in the third, but they need to get something going quick. One of those situations where it's really out of the player's control, just where they happen to be at the time, kind of dictates how it goes as Teme makes the kick save for IQ. Definitely a frustrating one to give up. IQ not out of this, but they need to be able to find the back of the net here relatively fast. To the point, Nico's shot somehow doesn't find a home. 
That shot blocked down. Great poke check there by Yakuri. And wearing the golden helmet for his team, signifying team leading scorer, of course. As that shot gets through, and a good stop by Ellie Kamel. And a shot off the post. Sand tough breaks for IQ here. Great chances, but still no goals to show for it. Yeah, that shot from the point had eyes. Unfortunately, no deflection. Plenty of screens as they do get that icing call. They have that shot from Niepi. That perfect location where you want to shoot from. I mean, he's there. His eyes must have lit up. He tries to pick that corner, and it goes off of the post here. IQ just seemingly to unable, unable to be able to buy any bit of luck here. That shot looked like it was either blocked down and went off the blocker. Couldn't quite tell, but regardless, still. Yeah, a big old goose egg on the scoreboard for IQ. And here's a three-on-one down the other way. Nepo looking for his options. Nowhere to go. Passed off the mark. Jurgli. Now for Niepi again, taking his time. Nikovalko looking. One-timer blocker stopped by Eli Kamel. Yeah, be back down low. Yukuri. Holding for Urubro, just trying to be patient. Three, three players for IQ take him out. But it's still Urubro in possession. Sian's good to Napa. Looking around. Terity, the between the legs move. Hands it off to Yukuri in the process. Who passes one on. Nearly halfway through this period here. IQ quickly running out of time. Urubro looking to stay perfect on the season. Look to lead it out here. Can the Epi on that left hand side. Back for Pottsburg. Threw one on. Loose puck. Nepa taking it back the other way. Again, another three on one developing. Nepa throws it on. And a penalty called. Worst case scenario for IQ. It's interference. Urubro to the power play as IQ center. Take a seat and sin again. We see players still struggling to adapt to the bumps not exactly working like they used to. Yeah, and you can see from that replay, it's oftentimes just kind of the slightest of contact. And again, it's not necessarily a bad play to make if the puck goes to him, but unfortunately didn't. And Ikevalko will take a seat. That one-timer is blocked. IQ in possession. They go for the quick out. Niepi trying to give chase against Harity. Nearly won it back on a hip check. Captain maintains possession. Good poke check there, though. Niepi not able to get the pickup. But he does draw the call because of the contact. So Sin, it looked like a negative. Turns into a positive four on four coming up. Yeah, and uh, just good kind of job of pressure right there and uh, forcing that out as uh, we're going to see Teddy uh, taking a seat in the box right there. Evening it up, so a little bit more space, which could work to IQ's benefit. They've had trouble getting to the middle here. Maybe the extra bit of space will allow them to do that. How frustrating is that for a defenseman to read the play properly and not get rewarded, and they score! IQ, it's getting looked at, but off the faceoff, they drive the net, rebound, and shoveled home. That'd I be will, unfortunate. Yeah, I'm a little confused why it's even being looked. Oh, oh. my goodness. Okay, that's a really unfortunate break there. I feel like that was a great play. Uh, the forward kind of pushed into the side of the goaltender. It was Jurgeli on the shovel shot there, kind of getting at home. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even characterize the goaltender really having a chance to get over and make that save. But uh, the uh, in-game officials here it seemed to disagree with my analysis, and we still have a two-goal deficit to overcome for Ed. Sjansko not able to hold on to that one. Who would possibly disagree with this analysis? Who would possibly? <laughs> a, an abbreviated 50-second power play here for IQ. Unlucky to not be within one. That's a rough way to start. That was a great poke check here. Six and a half minutes to go. They need two. Trying to at least get a point out of this one. Ikevalko, big stop, Eli Kamel. And he's able to cover. I like that decision to shoot. It looked like he was thinking about that pass a little bit. So he did kind of cut off the angle a little bit, but shooting it to that opposite side was a great, great look right there. Maybe a tiny bit more of Amy could have still picked that corner, but Ellie Kamel was in great position for it and made that save. He's had a really good game. As Yakuri holds, we're back to five on five. Nigo Buna he has experience as a forward playing defense now for this team. He'll dump it in. Jansku had a bit of a step to chop to try and keep it alive, but Nico comes up with it for IQ, and here they go down the other way. Jurgli in a little bit of space. Quickly closes, but they still have the possession thrown on from the corner, and it hit the post. Chance here now, Yakuri not able to hold on to it. Three and a half to go for IQ, running out of time. 
Sally Kamel paddles that one behind the goal line. Terity to the far side. What a heads up play. Jansku, Nape back to him. No one for Nape to go on that one. Two minutes to go here now. Berber continue those interesting looks, whereas IQ still just trying to get these shots through. Great block. Here's Jurgli. The spin, the pass, easy interception for Terity. As Yakari stepping into the attacking zone, sends it down low, pass off the mark, and again IQ back in possession, but only momentarily. Under a minute to play. Loose puck, Yakari's here. What can he do? Looking, nowhere to go. IQ, at this point playing to just uh, at least get something on the board, Sim, but offside with 35 seconds to go. And that's kind of a tough break. Uh, it's oftentimes towards the end of the game, doesn't matter the deficit, you kind of want that play to keep moving. You, you feel like you have the momentum once you get that ball rolling. Just think of Alco though, kind of getting caught offside as he uh, collided with someone, couldn't quite get back. They still have a chance here, but they got to get something quick. Just a quick send out right there will go for icing. So still a chance off this draw. And with the ensuing faceoff, if they do score within, you know, a few seconds, however, there is still a chance, but yeah, the chance is getting slimmer and slimmer as the as the seconds tick away. But surprised to not see them go for the uh, extra attacker here. Maybe thinking about future goal differential and playoff implications, perhaps. Just can't score, at least don't give up the extra one. Not entirely sure, but here we go. 13 seconds, Potsburg can't hold on, but it's going to be sent down again. No icing. icing on the play, and that will seal the deal. Urbro get the job done in game number one. A shutout for Ellie Kamel, his second of the season in just three games. And again, Urbro stay perfect now, 3-0 on the year. And a well-deserved performance out of them. They are looking pretty fierce, I got to say. it's uh, It was tough for them to sort of get the offense, but once they did... Um, they were able to kind of shut the door, and we, we finally saw that uh, kind of slap pass towards the boards work on the opposite side. So it's good to see that that is definitely part of their arsenal, not something that they just broke out, and they could do it to either way. They tried to Jansku earlier, didn't connect, but the one to Yakari definitely did, and they were able to get a bit of a rush play out of it. So it looks like Edebro definitely preferring a lot of the counterattack plays. Uh, you know, that goal from uh, Jansku came off of him reading that and counterattacking. So it seems like... They're with their defensive set, they keep people to the outside, try to make those uh, quick turnover plays happen. I mean, it's not often you see a team double uh, the opponent's time on attack and, you know, their opponent coming with the victory, save for where, well, Feriostad a couple years ago when they were playing uh, Yippie Voskala and seemingly getting completely dominated, yet finding ways to win. So kind of getting a, a touch of that, touch of that feeling coming up from Edebro here with that counterattack style and just excellent defensive presence with... Uh, um, Ellie Kamel making the, the saves when he needed to. Just a very solid presence back there. Absolutely. Again, as we get a look here at that second goal, ultimately the insurance marker. Again, a very tough break. Both goals credited there. Again, to Iansko, who has a, a great performance in. He had six points in the first two games of the season. Adds two more goals to as well be over a goal per game pace at this point. It's been a great start to the season for him and for his club. Now, again, we still have the fourth and final game of this broadcast coming up one more time. We'll run it back. IQ and Urubro Hockey. We will get a quick word from our sponsors, and then we'll set the stage for our fourth and final game of the broadcast. Stick with us. Minkä päällä lakukastike maistuu parhaalta? Ei voi tietää ellei kokeile. Kouvolan lakritsi. Now it's oftentimes we won't uh, fill people in on uh, on discussions that might happen off air, but goodness gracious, in the day you and I potentially get over to uh, to Sweden or Finland, I'm going to gain about 10 pounds just trying everything that Wilhelm has to offer.
Yeah, I was going to say, just on the Wilhelm snacks alone, I'm gaining all that weight. <laughs> Not to mention all the other uh, national food that's going to be over there, which we don't really get to have uh, in our own home country. It's, yeah, it's going to be uh, absolutely fantastic when that day does come. However, we've got some more, a lot more hockey uh, to be played before that day it does come. And one more game here between Edinburgh and IQ. Again, a big shout out not only to Wilhelm, but of course our other sponsors as well. XBL on for this season. Come on, Lockerty back once more as our ST hockey. So again, uh, a big thank you to all of them. Sin, we look ahead to this next game. And again, these teams put us into a really difficult situation to say, hey, what adjustments need to be made? Because obviously for Erebor, a 2-0 shutout victory, things will went pretty well. About as well as they can go. For IQ, man, they just they just didn't have the luck of finding the back of the net. They tried a bunch of different looks. They mm -hmm. just couldn't couldn't get that goal. Yeah, and I would struggle to even say that they really got severely outplayed. I mean, obviously the time and attack was in their favor. The shots, I mean, it was tough to get the shots through at times. And then you can't really blame them for a goal that gets called back, which is arguably a goal that shouldn't be called back in in kind of normal circumstances, but that's the way it goes. I mean, combine that with kind of the own goal that went off Nico. It's hard to fault them at all for dropping that game. The problem is they did drop it. They didn't get a point out of it. So at the end of the day, you're getting people are going to forget about exactly what happened in this game and look at what what it brought them in the standings, which was a, a tally in that loss column. And we're going to have to bounce back here and find a way to kind of get around that uh, stifling Edinburgh defense and prevent those counterattacks from happening at the same time, which can be difficult. If you open up more offensively, that's where the counterattack can hurt you. And Jansku looked absolutely fierce in that regard. A look at the latest results around the league as well. Again, as we wait for the teams to match up, of course, earlier in this broadcast, we were able to cover games between Furlunda and HV71. And of course, Sim, we already talked about it early on. Feriestad, the wins over Havu. What about Roots Gaming and Northern Ascendancy as well? Both games going to overtime. We'll see Northern Ascendancy in action tomorrow, of course. Yeah, and that's... Uh gonna be a great series again that's the northern ascendancy uh squad that we kind of know and love they're always sticking around never out of a game never out of a se series and again roots gaming another team that we're looking for in the uh the playoff conversation I, I feel like we've said that with about every team but that's just how we're set up now in the elite division every single one of these teams is a threat to crack that uh that postseason lineup here and you know good to see it look at granite gaming getting the uh, two games against Jurgården. i mean Tough, tough break for your Gordon, but uh, the the new the newly branded Granite Gaming uh, really making waves here. And I believe we do have the updated standings to look at here. And if not, I mean, at the very least, to give you the picture of the action that we had heading into today. And indeed, the standings are fully up to, or not fully updated. At least the Warbro uh, most recent result is not in. But you get a look here at the majority of the teams through four games played. Then who would have thought for Havu just one win in their first four games? I mean, there are some very surprising results here uh, to look at so far. Yeah, there absolutely is. And uh, more to the point of that Northern Ascendancy sticking around this. Well, three of their losses, they have lost every game, but three of them were in overtime. So they got to, you know, find that way to get that uh, that extra point, that goal when really necessary. But yeah, I mean, look at the kind of the new standings, the new the new Salwa when they're kind of right now in the playoff picture with the extra couple games played. But, you know, don't count out ZSC, don't count out Conquer. Again, we mentioned Northern Ascendancy. We'll be able to talk about them in a little bit. Of course, and I'll be back tomorrow. Information on that, of course, at the end of this game. But right now, as you saw there on your screen, exclamation point survey in chat, you have an opportunity to take home a PS5, and all you have to do is share your thoughts with us on everything surrounding NHL gamers. So again, exclamation point survey. Big save there early on by Ellie Kamel. Your opportunity to win a PS5 still alive, so make sure you take advantage of that. Ellie come out with a toe save. Sin big stops early on. I was, didn't even get a chance to mention Urubro in the white this time out. I think you know that because Ellie Kamel is still looking perfect. That was very, very close. And IQ coming out firing. That first shot from Nika was very good. And then that another one, just Ellie Kamel sliding the wrong way, somehow able to get the pad on it. Into the traffic there. Potsburg shot. Doesn't find a way through. Yurga Lee. Chance for Ikavalko. And Ellie Kamel still standing strong. Blocker stop. Puck doesn't go. Yurga Lee couldn't pull the trigger with a wide open cage. And Ellie Kamel recovers. 
He gets the shot off, but you mentioned that that split second where he wasn't able to pull the trigger. Ellie Kamel gets back over, makes a save. What a start for IQ, but what a start for uh, Ellie Kamel back there. Really, really kind of saving the skins of Erdebro so far. D to D here, Pottsburg down for Yergely. Circles back. Got to watch out for that pressure out of nowhere from Jansku and Yakuri. Of course, it cost IQ. A couple of times in that first game. Big interception here by the centerman. Quick set of passes. Couldn't handle the puck. Yampy holding it down low. Tried to find that outlet pass. Urbro all over it, but play him a fire with these turnovers. Nepa able to work it back to Terity, who at least clears the zone. Intercepted by Jansku. Can't get the shot off because he's taken down Urbro. To the power play. Tough break for IQ after a really good start. Yeah, Sin, again, we'll see the power play early on. Yeah, just really unfortunate right there as Pottsburg tried to kind of send it across to his defensive partner, but was a, bit, a little ill-advised in that situation as a four-checker was bearing down on them in that good start. I wouldn't say wasted, but all that momentum that they got really kind of halted in its tracks now. They got to kill a penalty. Upcoming and Captain Niepi in the box. Yergely trying to make something happen shorthanded. Terry able to win that battle. Here's Napa going through. A lot of speed. Jansku not able to hold it. Puck still alive, perhaps, though. Pottsburg able to fend off the double team pressure and clear. This one's going to be on goal. And Ellie Kamel able to make that save as well. Said, I thought that might have rolled off the pads and maybe clipped the inside of the post. That's what it looked like to me, too. One timer and a goal. What a shot from Yakuri out of nowhere. And it's Urbro who strike on the power play. Sim, Sim, what a bomb of a shot that was. Yeah, absolute Ooh. howitzer. Just shot out of a cannon right there. And what a pass across those high uh, one-timers right there. As you do see, he has that uh, superstar ability uh, in his build. And what a time to break that out. I love to see those high, kind of the higher in the zone one-timers come out, especially on the man advantage. As there is that little bit more space. And oftentimes, teams are trying to collapse more around their net. You can kind of catch them off guard as that was an odd angle shot skittering through. Last name, Koivin the Emmer. Here's an Ovechkin. We have a goal. Napa in front off the feed from Yakuri. What a start for him in this game. And Urabro double it up. It is two to nothing out of nowhere. Waved sin. off, though. It's been waved is off. I think we're getting a review. At least I thought I. And, well, they call it a good goal. Yeah, I saw in the replay the, goal, uh, the ref waving his hands. I'm not too sure what they're looking for. Maybe a slight bit of contact. Nonetheless, I mean, again, kind of heartbreaking for IQ. They start off so strong, unable to capitalize, take the penalty, they get scored on, and then kind of an odd bounce goes in the back of their net once again here. It just seems like Lady Luck not quite on their side so far, but they're going to have to battle their way back nonetheless. And Napa credited with that goal. We've seen the officials get involved a lot in today's actions in between reviewed goals. You never really know what the outcome is going to be. IQ right back where they were in the last game, down by two. Jurgly tries to dish to the point, nowhere to go, and that pass all the way back down. That's dangerous! Backhand hit the side of the goal! Yakari nearly picked up his third point of the period off of really an errant play from Nico. But here's Pottsburg now in the attacking zone for IQ. They're desperate for a goal. Jurgly shot, good rebound, but taken away. By the defense, Migo Buna was there. He picks it back up. Only to have it knocked back into the Orbro a defensive zone. Turn over here one more time. Niepi trying to get it down low. He recovers. Looking at his options. Goes to Yergely. Pottsburg cutting back. Using the boards to protect. Slap shot to flex. Loose puck after the tie-up. And Eli Kamel is there. And Sim, we saw the interesting moment there, I believe... Uh, that was Terry tying up the man in front and stopped him from getting to what could have been a really dangerous rebound. Yeah, so very uh, kind of heads up play there from the Edinburgh defense and again continuing to frustrate the IQ attack right there and it's, it's been a rough go for IQ. They seem to not really been falling apart, but I mean right there a little bit of miscommunication. They're definitely got to feel on edge with all the kind of things that have happened right there. We kind of flash back to what happened to Nico at the point where it seemingly he dumped it back into their zone zone where Yakari was able to get to it and get a get a chance that went off the side of the net. I think he was just trying to shoot that one into the zone, but because he sort of cleared the line and began to turn around, it actually went directly behind him. I'm not too sure if that's exactly what happened, but I have had that happen to myself, and it's a completely uh, wonky moment. 
John Scoot not able to find a teammate on that one. Ikevalko held up and an offside call here. 3 one on the clock. Again, if you missed it, Urubra, a 2 to nothing victory in game number one. So we are right back where we started. Essentially a continuation, it almost feels like. IQ looking to finally get a puck past Ellie Kamel. Easier said than done. So it won't happen with dangerous turnovers like that. No, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. And again, IQ is just seems to be in kind of in a state of uh, a little bit of dismay here as they keep trying to throw other things at at, at, at a you know Ordebra so that they're not really ready for what's going to happen. And Ellie Kamel has been frustrating them. That being said, got to be careful from that Ordebra uh, counterattack. As that bomb from the point just wide. Nico able to keep it in. IQ again looking for that goal. Turned over. Yakuri has a man with him. Pass over. Backhand doesn't go for Napa. It was close though. And Teme just able to squeeze the legs and keep that one from crossing the line. And good thing he did a goal right there off of another counterattack from Edinburgh. Would have been absolutely heartbreaking and... Tough to say that it had been put away uh, early on, but it would have been so much more difficult for IQ with the way Ellie Kamel is playing and with uh, you know some of their misfortunes so far, as I say that, as Migo Buna unable to hold the line, shoots that one against the boards. Uh, 17 seconds remaining here in this first. It, again, IQ seemingly with the advantage at times with the puck possession and perhaps even with chances, but it's Edebro who has been able to find the back of the net twice. Nico's quick pass finds Jurgli, a little bit of space. Nothing to do with it, though. Yakuri will pick it up, cross the line, looks to shoot just wide on the glove side. There was a little bit of space there. Shot inaccurate, Sin, a 2 to nothing lead for Urbro. And again, it's Yakuri's phenomenal 1T shot that started off the scoring. Yeah, and that was just a huge blast right there uh, on that man advantage again. Directly after IQ had been swarming in the Urbro zone, unable to find the back of the net, and they take a call. And that is kind of what started the... Uh, uh, the tilt back in the uh, in the favor of Edinburgh right here is uh, it's it's tough. This is an uphill battle for IQ. Again, they haven't necessarily been playing bad by any means, as you saw perhaps a glimpse of, uh, of the numbers right there is four plus minutes of time on attack for IQ and probably less for Edinburgh. They just have been able to capitalize. We get a look right there. It's just a beautiful pass. I mean, that's a tough pass to make. You kind of threaded the needle between three black jerseys to find Yakuri there. As we get another look here, that was Yakuri. Nice bit of skating and a puck control down low as he tried to send it. Okay, it went up the skate. So I'm sure they're looking for a uh, distinct kicking motion, which obviously in a video game is very easy to suss out if there's distinct kissing, kicking motion. Um, I mean, hey, distinct no, no. kissing motion would be very <laughs> yeah. no, sus out too. <laughs> I was, was kind of smiling there as I was uh, let, letting some tongue in cheek go, and uh, well, my pronunciation was a bit off. Couldn't let it go. I'm sorry. I had to bring it up. There's oh, sometimes we both in the speak, and we're both nice to one another, and we gotta let it go. I couldn't let it go that time. No, absolutely not. I, I I would expect nothing else. Well, I don't know if that's a positive or negative, but I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll take it for sure. <laughs> IQ in possession here over the blue line. Again, still looking with four periods of play now between these two teams. IQ still without a goal. Again, Urbra looking to go 4-0. Only two other teams have accomplished that again. For Lunda and Atreds, our defending champions. Of course, that was our championship matchup for ECL Elite Division last season. Hotspur shot off the legs of a defender. Loose puck all the way back to Nico. Tried to step in, nowhere to go. Jackery one more time. Ever dangerous, as we said. Still has it. Slap shot, just a uh, couple, oh. uh, couple dozen feet out. What a hip what check. A Woo! That was incredibly close. So that was one of the most violent hip checks I've ever seen. IQ across, it still doesn't go. What a job though, to keep that puck alive. On that hip check, a good scoring chance for Urbro. Three nothing, almost seems like the death knell. If they're able to get it. Good 1T, though. Better interception. Good 1T attempt, I should say, at least. Good heads up play to look for that pass. Niepe not able to find any options there. Pottsburg shot. Ellie Kamel makes the save through the traffic. Uh, yeah, that... I saw Ikevalko get the animation for the flex, and I'm not too sure if he made contact. It all happened so quickly. I'm curious to see. We didn't get to see the locker rooms from either one of them, so if he doesn't have that big tipper on... 
then you kind of are maybe starting to wonder if he wants to kind of put that on for situations like that. There's been a couple looks for IQ with shots from the points that somehow found their way in. As Jansku denied, loose puck still there. And Tevez able to make the save. It was almost a reoccurring nightmare for Nico. This game's still two to nothing. And again, Edebro out of nowhere, get a massive chance. That was Jansku once again going for that one-handed tuck and somehow stays out. It's been a very entertaining period of play so far. Tumultuous, I would say. <laughs> we're not even halfway through one of those games. It's like, yeah, we, we could call a playoff series between these two teams. That'd be a lot of fun. Always love to see what matchups kind of live up to the hype. And this one's so far entertaining, to say the least, as it's dumped in. Terity, so strong in defense for his club. Puck turned over, though. That shot doesn't find its way through, and it's poked back all the way to the IQ zone. And this is starting to get a bit worrisome for IQ, who have yet to find the back of the net in this series, much less this game so far. And as time ticks away, it's got to become more and more frustrating. Half a spinning pass doesn't find a way through. Nico up to Niepi. Captain for IQ. Can he be the difference maker? Nico shot, Ellie Kamel. Picture perfect positioning, no rebound to be found. And uh, frustration, LB or L1 coming out from Nico there, as I'm sure he was aiming for that opposite side. It went directly into the crest of Ellie Kamel as we're looking, probably a timeout coming out. Yeah, please give me another look at that because, yeah, Nico, it was a great play. Uh, drew him in deep. Nico slides in, gets the open look, and yeah, I, I can almost guarantee that he's shooting for the right side of the net right there, and unfortunately for him, the shot aim just goes directly into the chest of Ellie Kamel, and he expressed his uh, frustration at the end there by uh, dropping down into that shot block animation. So, once again, IQ getting the looks, just not able to get the fortune or the shot aim or whatever you want to say so far. Again, not playing poorly, just not able to find the back of the net quite yet. Durbra. Gonna come up with possession off the faceoff. Parity having to send that one back around. Good pressure there from IQ. What a switch up that was, and it's gonna pay off. Oh yeah, Curry just couldn't make that fall up pass, and that was a very creative zone exit. Yeah, it absolutely was. And man, that's Edinburgh. Their counterattack is 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 really incredible. Not really much on the long stretch passes, but as I said, the creativity. The Epi, again, just not able to make anything happen there. Pottsburg, trouble. Yakari takes it away one more time with speed down the boards. Pass, Nepa, not able to get the shot off. A couple of times, and it's just been that, for both squads, really, that extra second as that shot goes just high. Locker side. That one extra move they need to make to get the goal just hasn't been there. What a poke check. Jansku coming away with it again. Breakaway makes the move. Couldn't drag the puck through the opposition. Good recovery from the IQ defense. And once again, Jansku, a tremendous read in the defensive uh, end leads to kind of a, not a breakaway there, kind of a one-on-one uh, -on -one situation in which he, as Nico was, you know, hustling to get back there. He tried to do the one-touch deke around him, which is definitely not a bad call there as, uh, you know, he was extended with the defensive skill stick out trying to just cut off the angle there unfortunately wasn't able to make a clean play on it and get the shot away but once again Jansku just proving how dangerous he is and how much offense starts from good defense 132 to go here in the second period this 2-0 scoreline holding strong despite some phenomenal chances for both offenses here one minute to go now IQ trying to get in on the forecheck. Yergley, this one off the back of the net and all the way up to Pottsburg at the point. The FA trying to go back to Yergley. Great read by Migo Buna. Napa trying to pull something through here. It's Migo Buna. Three seconds to go. Sauce in the middle, intercepted by Nico. That brings us to the end of the second period. 40 minutes gone. And still, that 2 to nothing lead intact. Yeah, I'm sure Nico is kind of a... Uh... Uh, breathing a kind of a sigh of relief. We're just feeling vindicated right there for fuck. <laughs> <laughs> every time. Every time it's elite edges. Boy, look at how much agility this guy has as his head is driven into the boards. Every time. <laughs> Sorry, Sin. Continue. I forgot what I was going to say now. That's okay. <laughs> oh, this is my favorite video game. I'm so glad we have this spot. My goodness. Sin, IQ, what's it going to take heading into the third period? Um, A lot of things. They need a tiny little bit of luck. 
because uh, they really haven't had any of it. You could even argue Edebro's had a bit of fortune uh, so far, and Nico's had probably the most misfortune out of anyone with that uh, kind of de deflected shot going off him. Oh, that's what I was going to say. He's pretty happy to get that a clean pick off for what must feel like once in this series so far at the end there, not allowing that uh, that pass to get through. But, yeah, it's been, you know, from from the failed pickup that led to the own goal to the uh, – the shot at the end there, which could have easily been a goal as Ellie Camel was really sliding over there. Just hasn't been able to get anything going. What a play out of nowhere. We have a game. The goal. Ikavalko finds the breakthrough IQ finally off the board after an electric pass from the to make it happen. That's exactly what IQ needed. They started off these periods very, very strong in every single every single one right there. And finally, they're able to connect right there as Ikevalkos finds the back of the net. Just some really excellent pass from down low back to the slot. He puts it home, and Eli Kamel is human after all. Just a one-goal differential now uh, for IQ. The team's leading scorer finds the back of the net. IQ are back in this one. Urbo right back in on the attack. Loose puck recovered by Migo Buna. He'll get it down low. Big hit there, but still fighting for the puck. It's IQ in possession. So here we go. They now have that confidence. They know they can get the goal. Potsburg with the wheels and draws the trip as well. Slap shot on Eli Kamel with the save. Potsburg with the, the Sibelius stride cruising down the wing there. Gets the puck back. Pass into the slot and broken up. Power play coming up here for IQ. A tremendous opportunity, Sin, for them to tie this game. Yeah, absolutely huge. They just got a goal. Now they have a power play opportunity as that will be Tara D in the box. And he's a, a huge, huge piece of that uh, defensive presence of Edebro right here. So this is a major chance for IQ. If Ikevalko can win this faceoff, get something set up, see what they want to do with it. They've been great in the offensive zone. And they do win the draw. D to D. Here's Potsburg. Looking at his options, tried to go to one of the two on the left-hand side, and fortunately for him, I think pass assist just kind of stopped him from making a choice. Oh, you got two open guys? Are you going to hit neither of them? Good pass there, though. Niepi in the attacking zone has options. Potsburg, one-timer just wide. Now the Kamel never saw that one. There's another one, rebound and covered. And Sen, he got lucky because there were two opposing sweaters in front of him. That nearly picked that one up. Yeah, neither of them got a look, got a deflection on either. And uh, yeah, pretty fortunate to have the, the rebound control and the wherewithal to be able to cover that one up as they look for a one time there. Excellent position in it from Yakuti there to get the pick. Hawk dumped out under 30 seconds to go here in the power play for IQ. Back to within one after a very early goal. Big check there by Jansku to break it up. And indeed, we're back to five on five. Here's Potsburg. Throws it in the middle, nearly swept in on the backhand. Second chance still alive around the post. And Orobro able to recover. IQ finding success with these different looks that they're throwing towards the defense and goaltending of Orobro, who have a chance, but Yakari just couldn't hold on to that one. It's IQ going back down the other way, all the way across the ice. Yergely to Potsburg, shot broken up. The pickup there, still alive. And I have no idea how Niepi was able to find that puck. But down the other way, it's Jansku. Trying to avoid trouble. Maybe even trying to draw that trip. Over to Migo Buna. Back to Jansku. One-timer big save. He was torched on it earlier. Teme saw it coming. Denies Jokery on that great one-timer. Yeah, I think even Niepi was surprised he got the pick up there because he had a bit of an open net to, to, to look at and he didn't wasn't able to pull the trigger because probably just not expecting to get that puck. As Nico has it, eight and a half minutes to play now here in the third period. Potsburg, back for Ikevalka. Potsburg again, and unfortunately that pass, not where he would have wanted it to be. Yeah, not at all, unfortunately. It's kind of getting to that point where you may be gripping your controller a little tighter right there. Just could have hesitated a bit more to make that play. What a move to the inside being net by Niepi there to get that shot off of the pass, but Eli Kamel says no, gets the cover once again to slow things down for Edebro. And Yergeli with the interesting look to throw it right back towards goal. Offensive zone draw for IQ. Six shots to one here in the third. Nigo Buna has it. Quick out to Jansku. Great job on the back pressure. Here's Yergeli now. 
Interesting creativity just didn't pay off though. And that puck is cleared. Will it go down for Rising? Yes, it will with 5.01 to play. Another good chance for IQ with an offensive zone draw here. They're really starting to put the pressure on Edebro. Again, it's been tough for them to find the back of the net, but they have been getting their chances here. At some point, a bounce has to go their way. This puck, though, out of the zone. Jansku will pick it up. Sauce pass, loose puck, and Ted is able to cover. Plays it out as well into a little bit of trouble that Pottsburg's able to get out of. Kavalka back for Niepi. Pottsburg, Nico, loose puck, scores! And Kavalko finds it for his second of the game. And IQ have tied it in the closing moments of this third period. Sin finally, 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 they're able to get some offensive zone time and make the most of it. Yeah, and that was the bounce that they needed. Ikevalko kind of going for uh, the deflection slash screen. It bounces off his knee, goes right to his stick. He's able to pull the trigger, put it home on Ellie Kamel there as we will see the timeout coming. But look at that. I mean, again, kind of like the first game. IQ, 15 shots on net, more than double the time on attack. That's kind of been the case here, but it's been the counterattacking. Wow, a double bounce right there actually off of Ikevalko, off oh, the man. defender who looks to maybe kick it to his stick, but put it on a platter. Furry Cavalco, who's able to put that one home again. They've had some misfortune in this series so far. They get a bit back from the hockey gods here, and what a time to get it. You've tied this game up late in the third, 317 left. This is going to be a very, very interesting uh, next couple sequences of hockey here, Tugi. Absolutely. Anybody's game at this point. Pottsburg for Yergley. Cavalco on the brace. Yergley nearly had a chance. From point blank range. Nico shot blocked. Here comes Yakari all alone on the breakaway. Big flying poke check. Loose puck bouncing around. A pile up in the slot in the crease. And IQ survive it. Final minute of play and an icing call. Face off back down in the Urubro end. Yeah. Um Everything but the puck went in the back of the net right there. I counted like one or two bodies, and and then it could have been a you know a counterattack back the other way. IQ simply wasn't able to uh, to capitalize on it. Then again, another stretch pass pass the other way that Nuppa was just unable to get uh, possession of. What a pass right there! Loose puck, Teme, able to play that perfectly to stop any opportunity of uh, a scoring chance down the other way. Just kind of a pure. Uh, a uh, pure chaos here towards the end here in the last few minutes. Pucks bouncing all over the place. Both teams just uh, going for the net, trying to get a late one. Napa not able to get that shot through. 40 seconds to play here. IQ were down 2 to nothing in this game after losing the first game 2 to nothing. Napa not able to find his way through. Interesting moment here for both teams. Urubro back in possession. Yakari will dump it in. Jansku gives chase against Nico. Handled well by IQ. 10 seconds. One more rush. Potsburg trying to gain the line. Yergley's there. Threw it on. Nearly caught. Ellie Kamel adjusting. And both teams with a well deserved, hard earned point. Sin, we're going to overtime. Yep, and I kind of mentioned this in the pregame. This is best case scenario uh, for Edinburgh. Well, obviously, best case would be getting uh, uh, all four points, but they have guaranteed themselves three points in this series right now, which goes a long way to kind of solidify a good start for them. They came into today 2-0 and with four important points under their belt. They're 3-0 and right now with a chance to make it 4-0. and If not, again, they still get the, the point in this one and they have yet to lose in regulation if they do indeed lose here to IQ. But again, it's it hasn't been a case of IQ being outplayed. It's the fact that Edebro's defense has been great, Ellie Kamel has been great, and Edebro's counterattack have, have just been able to capitalize uh, on, on just not even really mistakes, just slight sort of uh, opportunities. Like, I can't even call them mistakes because it's really been Edebro making it happen. Janska in particular has been able to force the issue here force a turnover and, and get a chance to be the other way uh, for Edinburgh and they've been able to capitalize for the most part here but you keep tempting fate and letting the other team kind of get that much zone time eventually it can come back to bite you IQ have tied it up here will they be able to get that next important goal to be able to get themselves two points on the day sudden death we will be here for as long as necessary 
which is a scary proposition when we've had so many late overtime games, but between these two teams, doesn't feel like work at all. And there we go! A minute and a half in! What a play by Niepi! Yergely is there! IQ come back from 2 nothing down to hand Urabro their first loss of the season. Just tremendous job from IQ right there. Drive the net, try to get that pass through. Yergely, the recipient, the OT hero, puts that one home. And just what a little nice bit of, uh, of L skating right there to not only protect the puck, but as you see, with his body positioning, with his stick positioning, it opens up that passing lane. And he's able to kind of thread the needle through. Yergely gets a piece of it, and Ellie Kamel cannot save the day. Once again, IQ picking up that win. That was absolutely massive. They needed some points out of the matchup today as, as close as it, as it is between these two teams. And just for the mental victory for themselves as well as, once again, they played extraordinarily well. I liked Erebro's game, very solid defensively, good counterattacks, but when you let a team get that much time and attack that many shots, eventually it will come back to bite you. That was the case here in the second game as they did have the 2-0 advantage and ended up being IQ battling their way back and getting that win in the end. A huge result for IQ. Decent little split there. They're now 2-2 two and two on the season again. Erebro 3-0 oh and 1, so... Again, uh, a big winner on the day uh, from Linda and H Reds. Again, still with those perfect records. But Sin, what? Uh, I mean, again, obviously the close score here. Interesting result there with how the player fell. But and right there too, a really tough break. All things considered for Urbro. But at the end of the day, I don't. I don't know. Like you gave IQ the opportunity, the chance to walk back in. They dominated you in the third period. You know. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what was the case. I mean, IQ, they looked good in that first game, but in the second game, they 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 looked even better. Um, as that, that goal right there, I think, was the first one scored. I'm not too yes. sure, but it's so similar. So similar to that OT goal when you think about it. I mean, he didn't go as low. He did more of the, the spin in the slot, but it's the same kind of setup. The in-close support, the pass through to the guy to kind of make the goaltender move laterally, see if you could beat him. And it worked out uh, to perfection right there as they uh, pick up the win in OT very early on into it, wasting no time, as you saw right there. And just it, I'm going to shout it out again because it's it's beautiful when it works. That, that, that bit of L skating right there to open up the passing lane. They capitalize on it and uh, pick up a massive, massive uh, extra point right there. Obviously, that second goal has to be a frustrating one. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's, it can uh, almost feel like... <laughs> You remember those old shooting games where it's like, hey, you're on a rail. You know, it's just like, hey, you're just along for the ride. Look around and see how it goes. That's one of those goals, unfortunately, and a tough break for Urbro in that way. But still, uh, needless to say, and I think you can see why both these teams made the playoffs last year and certainly have the potential to do so again this season. We want to quickly take one more look at the latest results around the league. Of course, on today's broadcast, we were able to cover uh, the two games set between Forlunda and HV71. And as well, you see elsewhere, uh, ZSP, uh, ZSC Esports and Conquer Gaming uh, just reversing the fixture of one another. Each team walking away with the one to nothing victory today. And very interesting between those two teams. We've, we've covered some uh, ZSC before. They've had some uh, high-scoring affairs. It definitely seems like they're uh, trying to shut things down a little bit more on their back end, which, you know, good defense is definitely a, a great quality to have here in the ECL Elite. And it won't be fully updated, but a look as well at the standings, of course, for everything. NHLGamer.com is the place to be for those fully updated numbers. And, of course, for Uribro, they are up to seven points on the season along the lines, uh, you know, that we see from Roots, Granite, and Goons. Again, Feriestad, the huge result for Havu. But, of course, most teams on four games played since it's a 30-game regular season, we have a long, long way to go. Actually, every team now on the four games played total. So it's going to be a very interesting season, to say the least. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, as we sort of get to that 10-game mark, you'll start to see a little bit of separation right here. You know, obviously, way too early. You can make certain predictions about teams that absolutely should not uh, fall out of the playoffs. That being said, if you do that, I'm pretty sure you'd include Havu amongst them. And then with the 1-2-1 one, and one start, Definitely not what they would want to see and does put them out of that picture right now. They're definitely they're going to have to really uh, kind of have a uh, big responses here in their next few sets. Not what you would expect either. You look at those goals against 
I mean, there are only four teams in double digits right now. Goons, Havu, and YMCA, who all made the playoffs last year, and then the new boys in HV71. So, again, you never quite know what is going to happen in an ECL Elite season. We look ahead now to tomorrow's action. If you enjoyed seeing Urubro and Forlunda in action, well, guess what? You're going to see them again tomorrow as they go head-to-head. -head. We will also be able to catch Northern Ascendancy for the first time this season as they take on Feriastad, who are looking very, very interesting after some good results against Granite and especially Havu now in the opening stages of the season. 1945 CET, of course, 2 p.m. Eastern Time for you lovely fellow North Americans here. Sin, another interesting day, an interesting night of action. Very much looking forward to tomorrow as we also take over the Thursday casts because, hey, we, we, we need our faces out there that much more, apparently. The vocal cords are going to be strained, but uh, it's worth it with, again, the action that we should see tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I can't tell you the amount of times I just turned into the to the Thursday finished broadcast uh, and just to watch the action. It's just, I you know, ECL Elite just... Uh, Again, keeps getting better. The stakes keep getting higher with this new format as well. I mean, really going to see those teams, you know, really try to scratch and claw their way into those uh, big playoff positions because it really, yep. it really keeps adding up from season to season. Absolutely. So again, you can catch Sin on YouTube at Sin for the Win Productions. Of course, you see on your screen there on Twitter at Sin FTW Prod. I am everywhere at Tugi Twenty Four. A big thank you to all of you for watching and supporting NHL Gamer. We will hopefully see you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day, your evening, or get some sleep for those of you that might need it. Uh, we will see all of you tomorrow. Have a good one. Take it easy. Catch you. Later.